The integrity of American elections is akin to that of third world countries. Now, this is according to a new report by the Electoral Integrity Project. Now, the Electoral Integrity Project is a joint project from both Harvard University and the University of Sydney. Now, uh, those of you that have been paying attention to this election, uh, the last election, as well as the primary, probably already know that there are some big, big issues with our electoral process. Now, let me get into the report here. Uh, now, the study surveyed more than 700 American political scientists on the perceived integrity of their state's electoral systems. Now, the experts were asked to rate the state's performance on everything but ele from election laws and procedures to district boundaries, voter registration, and campaign finance laws. Now, what they found is that overall, the U.S. electoral system has about as much integrity as the systems found in Argentina, Mongolia, and Rwanda. Ugh. Okay, so you might be asking, okay, well, who does have the better electoral system? Who does have more integrity in their elections? Well, it found that uh, Denmark and Finland have the strongest electoral systems in the world, followed closely by Norway, Iceland, and Sweden. That is uh, not a big surprise here. Is there anything that they don't rank really high at? Really, those countries? Now, the United States, however, scores somewhere in the middle, 64 out of a possible 100 points. Now, the lowest ranked nations in the uh, world include uh, dictatorships such as Syria, Ethiopia, Burundi, and Equatorial Guinea. Now, look, so again, we're uh, towards the middle, in the better part of the middle, uh, but still not the greatest, but we're also not the worst. America. Go America, right? So, look, you might be asking, why is it so bad? Well, for one, the system is not uniform. What we have right now, uh, when it comes to our voting systems, is essentially 50 different countries with their own different rules. Now, the report states that unlike many other Western democracies, there is a wide variance in the integrity of individual systems in American states. Now, these states have the constitutional authority to administer the elections, draw their own district lines, and set the rules that govern voter access. So now when you break it down by the states, there are states in America that do better than other states. So uh, I want to talk about first the top states. Now, uh, the, su the survey found Vermont to have the best electoral system in the United States. Vermont. I, there, it is. <laughs> there it is, man. Are you surprised? Uh, the home of Bernie Sanders, of course. Uh, now, along with Vermont, Idaho, New Hampshire, Iowa, and New Mexico ranked among the best-run states. You also had Washington and Colorado, which conduct their elections by mail, rounding out the top 10 as well. So those are a couple of the best states. What are some of the worst states? Well, you have Texas, Florida, North Carolina, Michigan, my state, Ohio, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Wisconsin, Arizona, and Rhode Island. So, so those are some of the worst states. In fact, 14 out of the 15 worst states happen to be controlled by Republican legislatures, of course. Now, so what makes these Republican states so bad that they drag the rest of the country down? Well, okay. Again, they're run mostly by Republicans. Now, the one exception is Rhode Island. Rhode Island has full Democratic control. And out of the 15 worst states, Rhode Island actually has the highest integrity out of all of them. But still, fairly bad. Now, again, why? Why are they so bad? What makes them so bad? Well, the Republican-led legislators have actually made it harder to vote. That's why they have such little integrity. Now, uh, for that, I go to Pippa Norris, right? Now, Pippa Norris is the Harvard political scientist who ran the study. Now, she said that the difference between the United States and other Western democracies is that the debates over everything from early and absentee voting to voter ID laws and poll closing times have essentially become partisan footballs. Uh, now, in other countries, however, those questions are purely administrative, which means politics doesn't enter into it at all. That's why they have better systems, because we continue to play politics. The Republicans and Republican-led states, they want to use this as a political football in order to restrict people's voting rights so that, that it makes it easier for them to win. 
Now, um, Pippa says, quote, particularly since 2000, what's been happening is increasing partisan polarization in American elections. There, these are the sort of issues that in most countries are administrative issues. What happened since 2000 is that the lawyers have thrown their hats in the ring. So now, of course, what she means by lawyers is that due to these, a lot of these uh, voter ID laws, for example, Democrats have decided to sue. Republicans will put these laws into place. Democrats will sue. Here come the lawyers. Now, uh, unfortunately, Democrats and Republicans now fight over virtually every aspect of election administration. And many of the states that scored lowest in the Electoral Integrity Project's report have been a heart, at the heart of those specific battles over things like voter ID. In fact, after taking over a number of the state legislatures in 2010s, Republicans have led the charge to require things like voter IDs in states such as North Carolina, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. However, on Democratic-led states, such as California and Oregon, they've passed laws that were trying to register more voters to have more people vote. Now, um, in, for, for example, in California, you have a universal voter registration law. Now, that, of course, led to a huge surge of new voters ahead of November's election. Now, showing that, of course, Republican politicians, well, they only, they only care about disenfranchising voters. They want less people voting because that's how they win. You essentially block the vote. And that's been their strategy for the last 30 years. And this has been admitted on camera. Paul Weyrich with the, the goo goo syndrome. We want less people voting because the less people that vote, the better chance we have of winning. It's, a, it, it's right there. It's right in your face. They're telling you, yeah, we don't want your, we don't want people to vote that don't agree with us. Whereas liberals were like, yeah, we want everybody to vote. Why? Because it's a right. It's a privilege. You should be able to vote and you shouldn't have people blocked. And I'm saying it's a right, not a privilege to vote. But anyway, again, if you're a Republican, if you're somebody who believes in freedom, if you're somebody who believes in representative democracy, then you should be like, yeah, I do want everyone to vote. It's, it's in trying to block people, trying to disenfranchise people is literally un-American because we fought for people's rights to vote. That's what we're supposed to be. That's what we're supposed to stand for is allowing everyone to have their voice in a democracy. Anyway, now speaking of the worst of the worst, okay, the, re the report specifically points out Arizona as scoring particularly badly in categories involving election laws, district boundaries, and the efficacy of electoral authorities. Supreme Court in 2013 recently struck down, in, well, in 2013, struck down a law that required voters to show uh, proof of citizenship when registering. So that's something that they tried to pass in Arizona. No, you got to show your, your citizenship. Uh, can I take, I, I need your birth certificate. Show me your papers. Of course, that was unconstitutional. And then you had a chief office, uh, official in Maricopa County that ended up losing their job because of uh, an issue with early voting sites that led to long lines during the primary. Now, I remember reporting on some of this bullshit happening in Arizona during the Democratic primary. And that's just one example. You also have Wisconsin that scored particularly low in the district's boundaries category. Now, for example, um, it was so bad that in Wisconsin, three federal judges ruled last month that those state lines were specifically put there to uh, help Republicans. That these lines were drawn in such a way to benefit one political party over another and to discriminate and disenfranchise other people. Now, again, uh, this isn't, I mean, this is what they're, they're trying to do. This is what partisan Republicans are attempting to do. But I also want to note that it's not just Republicans. There are Democratic politicians that also gerrymander in order to keep their own seats. However, when they do that, they end up messing with uh, representation overall. So they end up screwing themselves as well, but they don't care because all they want to do is keep their own power. 
So it's a power. It's a problem with politicians from both sides. Now, another state, North Carolina. Now, North Carolina in 2013, uh, legislative Republicans passed election reform that uh, basically redo their uh, redrew their boundaries after the old uh, after courts ruled the old lines unconstitutional, um, and it also part of its unconstitutionality was that it violated minority rights. Now, on the subject of gerrymandering, North Carolina actually was one of the worst states, the worst offenders when it came to this. North Carolina Republicans. Now, Pippa Norris, she said, quote, America is particularly bad in terms of gerrymandering in political districts or of political districts. That's a problem for voter choice. It's also a problem, of course, for voter turnout. Overall, the report found that states in the South were generally seen as having more troubled electoral systems than both Northeastern and Western states. And of course, uh, one of the biggest reasons it's gotten so bad in the South as of late is because of the 2013 Supreme Court decision striking down Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act. Now, I, I just noticed, I just, I, I read you two different uh, pieces of legislation in two different states that came about in 2013 that were, of course, discriminatory towards minorities and disenfranchised them. And it all came about thanks to this ruling gutting Section 5 of the VRA. Now, Section 5 uh, basically said, hey, if you're going to redraw your district line, you're going to change your election rules, you got to run it by the Justice Department to make sure that you're not disenfranchising black people. We don't have that anymore. And as soon as they got rid of that, here went the states, this Republican states going, yes, we can now discriminate and disenfranchise minorities. Let's go to it, man. Let's go to it. Now, uh, during that whole ruling, it was said by Chief Justice John Roberts that racial discrimination in election laws was no longer a pervasive problem. To, uh, to which Pippa says, evidence, I'm sorry, uh, this is uh, the researchers overall, evidence from these expert evaluations suggests that this may have been unduly optimistic. In other words, bull. Now, Roberts and the Republicans who struck down the, the, the VRA, they knew that racism still existed. It's fairly obvious if, if you put any sort of research and effort into looking into it, that racism, of course, is still a problem in this country. And that the local governments that are Republican controlled will likely go back to disenfranchising minority voters. Why? Because not necessarily because they're 100% racist, it's because they say, well, Democrats, you know, are the people that make up Democrats, uh, Democratic voters. There are a lot of minority voters, so let's disenfranchise against them so we can win. And yes, there is a racial element to that, but is it overtly racist? Not in all 100% of cases. Still, again, they don't care about electoral integrity. They don't. What they care about is they care about power, and they care about their own power. And look, a good example of that is the cross-check system. Uh... Now, this system was put in place by Republican states to get rid of minority voters, have them purge in the rolls. And if you want to look up, uh, more into that cross-check system, I suggest you look at, at uh, Greg Palast. He's been looking into this whole thing, the best, uh, the best democracy money can buy, I believe, is a documentary that he, he's created. I would really check that out. But again, Democrats... They also don't do a good job at keeping the elections honest. And I've got to point to Rhode Island, which is also on this list of some of the worst. Now, establishment Democrats, during the presidential primary on the Democratic side, they ended up closing polling places in order to help out Hillary Clinton. And they tried to work against Bernie Sanders. So, again, establishment Democrats are also guilty of doing these things to try to disenfranchise voters that they don't agree with. And the point is here is that we do have major issues with our electoral system and we need comprehensive reform, starting with, of course, a reinstatement of Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act and a ban on voter ID requirements. You also need hand counting of paper ballots, rigorous standard for drawing district lines to prevent gerrymandering. And that's just getting started. We need to eliminate those 
voting machines that are easily hackable. You want to talk about uh, the possibility of, of Russia hacking the election? Well, you know, you know how to prevent that? By getting rid of those Diebold machines and going back to hand-counted paper ballots. That's what you need to do. So, but look, let's, let's start out by holding these corrupt politicians to account and demanding that they fix the system. And if they don't, well, we'll have to keep trying something new until they get the message that this cannot stand anymore. We've got to fix our election system and we've got to verify the vote. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent non-corporate media, go to our Patreon page and become a patron, patreon.com slash TYTNation.